functioning like Game Boys and like, oh, this is the entirety of Pokemon Red in Minecraft. <laughs> like, you didn't need to. The sole purpose of it was do it was because you could, and that's totally respectable. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that might be a good entrance into our topic today, Warping, because oh yes, yeah, yeah, they are pretty pretty similar. So let's uh, let's uh, welcome our guest today, uh, Josh Heater. How you doing today, Josh? Uh, doing pretty good, Steve. Okay. Hello, hello. Where am I this supposed is, to? This one, I think, to? is more so on you than this one. All right, well, hi. <laughs> uh, but thanks for coming to Articulate, dude. I'm excited for this because this is, um, I think this is one of those topics that uh, people are really passionate about and also is pretty broad, so you can take it into a lot of different areas. Sure, with, like, sure. Your interests uh, in it and everything. But topic today is LARPing. Um, generally, but also you do a specific LARPing, right? Yeah, yeah. I um, After you've done it for a little while, you, your tastes kind of molds. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of, like, different things end up going that way. Like, you play a bunch of different video games and realize you only like certain kinds Yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I also was doing research on this, and I didn't realize there were so many different, like, styles of LARPing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, which is very intriguing. But, yeah, to start off, like, how did you get into it, I guess? I mean, that's, you know, a pretty sure, question. Sure, sure. Um, for, for those of you who don't know, LARPing is, like... Uh, a, f a a weird amalgamation of like improvisational acting yeah uh storytelling and like fighting like you actually do fight yeah which i i've always loved that is pretty cool yeah and uh, and just like to get out there larping live action role playing is what it stands for mm -hmm. um actually i found out it was popularized in the 1970s they don't know when it first started but it was like during the 1970s uh, 1970s, like when D and D was getting kind of big. Yeah, LARPing is a lot like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. instead of on the table talking about it, you're doing it. You're actually just living it out, which is crazy. You know? right. It's 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 so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I got started in it when I was like 17. Okay. Uh, I really wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, no one wanted to play it with me because of yeah. its bad reputation. <laughs> and I think just in like looking up stuff about it on the internet. I saw, I came across this weird video, which was really an ad for uh, a company that sold LARP, like, weapons that you fight with, because you yeah. have to fight with, like, safe things. Right, right, right. Foam. And so these people had just, like, put on a little movie of themselves, like, doing the whole thing, and I remember thinking, like, wow, that seems really cool. Yeah. And just looking into a bunch of other things, and of course it gets lampooned a ton. I, who among us in internet culture hasn't seen the lightning bolt video? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I remember at the time being like, no, nah, that looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, at the time, a friend of mine just happened to do it, and he introduced me to the guy that got him into it. And uh, yeah, I, we drove three hours to get to this like 200 acre camp, yeah. dressed up like knights, and Whoa. duked it out, and it was awesome. So, yeah, so like your interest in just like, in general, so you wanted to, it, it came from D&D, &D, but in general, it was just, was it for you a way of, like, just playing? Was it because you, I know you're an actor now, too. Did it coincide with, yeah. <laughs> did it consul, uh, like coincide with your, your need or want to, like, act and do things like that? Was it more creativity-based, or was it just because you wanted to have fun? Uh, at the time, I yeah. think it was just a way of having fun. Okay. I, I did a little bit of acting at the time, but I was, you know, 17, so I don't really know what any of that meant. Right. Um, and, uh... I, I didn't really get the storytelling aspect of it all that much. I just kind of wanted to kind of live, like, the video games I had played. Like, I wanted to, like, be Link or, yeah. you know, be any of these characters. And I don't know. It was, at the time, I just remember thinking, like, this is a really cool way to get a lot of this out. And this yeah. is the only socially acceptable way I can sword fight somebody. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. yeah, totally. I still want to be Link, dude. I'm, like, rock climbing just to, like, emulate. Right? You go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every time just to feel it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah, so that first time, um, I mean, you, you dipped into it a little bit. But I think the first time was probably very significant for you, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it weird at first, like, being, like, like, coming into it and being like, all right, this is a new environment that I have to adapt to, or did you just, like, immediately, like, jump in? Um, I, I think I, I jumped in pretty well, except that I kind of didn't get my foothold in, like, who I was at the game, like, my character yet. Right. I remember um, my 
I you know, you, you give yourself like cool fantasy names or whatever. Yeah. And I panicked when someone asked me what my name was. Oh, and my man. I gave I told I told them my last name was Phillips. <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> distinctly no... not very fantasy. Yeah. Well what was the first name? Uh, Owen, a very normal name. Oh, it was just Owen Phillips. Yeah, yeah. And I went back and I went, hey, can I redo that? Yeah, yeah, and they were like, yeah, of course. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but it was like, there were people around. It was like live that I did that in front of people and got so embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was so, because they were so chill about it, because it's a game. Why would you care? Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, I, I remember it being like really, really, I don't know. It It absorbed a lot of my attention in life from that point forward for a little while. I like, Put a ton of money into it. Yeah. I uh, got my then girlfriend to go, and um, yeah, I just it, it was kind of the only thing I really thought about or cared about for a little while. She was probably mm. super pumped about it too. Oh, right? uh, for a little while, yes, <laughs> and then for a long while after, no. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, yeah, that's 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 it. Is that I think it's one of those things when you're first exposed to it. It's a it's a level of like freedom mm. that you don't normally experience because. You know, when you're a kid and right. you're like, we're on the playground and like, oh, we're going to go play Monster Hunters yeah. or whatever. Everyone goes, yeah, go do that. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then you're an adult and you do that. And everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? Get yeah. out of my house. Right. <laughs> right. Or get out of the park. Yeah. And uh, when you go LARPing, you have that freedom to just say, I'm going to go do this. And no one really questions it beyond saying, like, how can I help? Or do you want to fight? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So everybody's kind of in, like, buying into the idea. Exactly. Of... It doesn't function without every single person there buying in completely. Yeah. Which, like, I, uh, I mean, I, like, part of LARPing is there's like a social stigma to it that it's for like nerds and geeks or whatever. True. Um, which, if I've learned anything through doing this podcast, is that nerds are like the most passionate people in oh, the yeah. world that are like really smart about what they want to be smart about, and I love it. It's just like a passion for. Maybe mm. a more niche topic, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, but what I also find interesting is how much people just LARP in general without even really knowing it. Like, I was looking into the origins of it. And like you said, like, of course, there's, you know, like, you know, when you play games as kids, like, you know, Cops and Robbers or, you know, uh, Cowboys and Indians or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it is fun and it's fun to do. But then also, like, they used it, they cited, like, military exercises for it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. literally, like... For wars, they have to prep for war and, like, simulation mm -hmm. for war. I have a buddy who's an EMT who he had to go through simulations of there's, like, an active shooter and, like, oh, yeah. you need to prioritize doing this. And if someone's going to get shot or whatever, uh, it needs to be you that gets shot, not the person who did not sign up to be here. Yeah. Know? And I, training people for those situations or having them go through those things, like, emotionally makes a ton of sense yeah right like it gets yeah. you to prepare mentally for things you might not have been prepared for in your normal life right um and that doesn't happen as much at larp in that same way but Depending one thing that, on which which larp you're going to true right? Tr right, right, right. true but um like death happens a lot at these games Damn. of people that are typically pretty close to you mm -hmm. uh and getting to kind of play that out and think about like what you'd say to them in given scenarios i would say helps you a fair bit in doing something similar to that in real life. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a, like similar with acting, you know what I mean? Like you literally are, um, if you really want to immerse yourself into the game or whatever you're doing, or the simulation for that matter, then like you are literally putting yourself through that emotional vulnerability to experience what you'll potentially be experiencing in real life. For sure. When you're doing it, which is important, like, because that's, I mean, you don't want to go into shock when there's an emergency, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the education part is also what I found uh, really interesting about LARPing is there's actually a Danish secondary school called Osterskov Efterskol. I don't think I pronounced that correctly, but what they do it's is Danish. they literally use LARP to teach all of their classes. Like every class is taught through LARP. Wow. Which I thought was pretty like they do this whole simulation through um, like about African colonial colonialism. So basically, they start out LARPing as colonists and trying to, you know, take different parts of the territory. So like different colonists are all, you know, moving wow. to Africa at the same time, right? And then the second phase of that is um, the people that had kind of lost. So some, so, you know, the a certain uh, colony wins, and then the people that have lost then LARP as African uh, African people. What are they? Nationalists, nat natives. That's sure. The word that I was looking for African natives, right? Uh, and then they have to like stage coups and like really like understand wow. like what they all went through, and then 
they reach modern day Africa now and kind of LARP. How old are these people? Uh, it's post. It was as yeah secondary school. So I mean, pretty young. Um, but like I said, it, it has had really good results, especially for people who are like who can't sit still in, in regular sure, school. Sure, sure. Like yeah, that. there's there's definitely a lot of value in like I don't know. It's hard to be sit to like sit there and be told stuff and go, yeah, that seems true. Yeah, right. Because you're a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's much easier to say this is what it. Like, in a similar situation, this is how you would respond because it's how you th- instinctively think to, mm. you know. Uh, so that that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the Europeans are like everyone says it like light years ahead of us in terms of like the LARP community. It's it gets a little up its own ass sometimes, but right. uh, they have like castles and and like universities and stuff that they rent out for the sole purpose of these things, and it's like two weeks people go. And I only ever go for like a weekend at a time, right? Um, but you know, they'll they'll hire actors. They'll you know really do put a lot of money into set dressing. It's like really really big over there. They put a lot of uh, stock in it, which is very very cool and uh, to each their own. Um, I don't know how much I could totally do that though. Yeah, I was wondering, is that something that you'd be interested in? in There's doing? literally one that I'd be willing to do that for. Uh, there is a, a Witcher school yeah. in Poland because oh. it's, it's the the author is Polish. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you watch The Witcher? I have not, but I've heard of it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a book series and a video game series that I adore. And uh, when I heard that they had made like a, a school you could go to to be a witcher, I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll sing $2,000 on that and that alone. Right, right. You know? Yeah, I think you got to have one big one that you would really like sure. blow it all on. You know what I mean? Um, that's kind of, I mean, this is a silly uh, comparison, but like I enjoy the band Weezer. And every yeah. once in a while, they do a Weezer cruise where it's just the band. And everybody on the, and who can ever afford tickets to a Weezer cruise. <laughs> That's funny as shit. Yeah, it, it, just every once in a while. So it's like, I, I don't, wouldn't go on a cruise with anybody, like any other band or right. anything. But like, this is like my favorite band from childhood. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, if, if the opportunity arose, I would take it. You know Did you mean? ever play Skyrim? I have played parts of it, yeah. Did you play Oblivion, the one before it? No, actually. Uh, well, regardless, there is a voice actor, uh, his name is Wes Johnson, who uh he's like my favorite voice actor. He's so funny and weird. Uh and he also does that where he and a couple of his voice actor friends go, "Hey, we're doing a cruise. Come hang out with us." <laughs> but mind you, the man's like in his 60s, so uh, it's not like I'm going to be like, "Hey, we're going to go surfing together," right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's also like at least on the cruises like Weezer performs. You know, what are they going to like voice <laughs> act? Are they going to run through? I think they do. Really? Uh, I like... think they just do bits, okay. right? Like it's they almost treat it like a comedy hour where yeah. they kind of just you give them like character prompts and they'll they'll do their voices yeah. for that. It would be cool to have like a LARP thing like during the entirety of the cruise that you go on with them or whatever oh that'd be awesome yeah yeah definitely so yeah so uh just kind of getting back to it like we were oh, sure. just talking yeah no. <laughs> that's all right well, well uh the the other ways that larping has reached um you know education is they use it for like language immersion so like if you want to like role play is like you know going to a country yeah um and you know having uh conversations and trying to figure things out like that um, there's also uh, this trickle down of like people trying to instill like political awakenings within people. It's like you want to go to a LARP, and this is where I find that it, uh, LARPing gets really interesting. Is um, I was looking into the different styles and the Nordic style. Of oh LARPing. yeah, yeah. Yep. Have you gotten into? That's the one I do. Oh, oh inter- okay. So yeah, so you started out. Well, that's one of them. Okay. <laughs> um, so you started out and you went to this. It was just like a regular what, like fantasy? Was it like Tolkien? Based? Yeah, they're, they're called campaign okay. uh, LARPs, where it's like really kind of formulaic and it's really a lot like a video game. There's a ton of stats. Mm. Like your character has a set amount of health and yeah. like damage and weird abilities they can do. True. Sure. And uh, and that's that's all well and good if that's your style. Um, but man, does it slow things down. If it's, like, 10 of you, not really, but if yeah. they're, the one I went to had, like, over 100 people at any given time. Right. So there'd be fights where we'd have to sit there and, like, in the middle of a fight, adjudicate people's abilities, and it felt like we were buffering. Yeah. Like, we would be, okay, did that hit? Yes. Okay, do what? Do what? Do what? Yeah. And we'd be stuck there for so long. It was so annoying. Yeah. So I, I really, uh, I'm just not a fan of that anymore. So the Nordic style, which gets rid of a lot of that, yeah. is, in my opinion, much better. Yeah. Which, again, I, I, I want to jump into, but that was, you know, I want to, like, kind of track your journey, like, getting to that point, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but but first, I find, I, that's one of the things that is, like, 
within, I guess there's layers, right? There's layers of, of LARPing. So, you know, there's that kind of stat video game based and then it kind of like works its way up into being more of a fine art or a narrative, yeah. A narrative, right? Um, but I was like, on regular LARPing that you have done is like, doesn't it like the honesty is the best policy? Does that like get annoying? Like, like you said, it sounds like the buffering. It's like when, when I was playing, it's like, no, I hit you, dude. I did hit you. you that know what I mean? happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's honestly super frustrating yeah. is because you can watch some people like, you know, all walks of life. Everyone has different levels of maturity and, and how right. they respond to these things. But if you get really invested in it, it starts to like really kind of work on your, your brain a little bit. Sure, yeah. And there would be people there who would throw huge fits mm. and like break shit and scream and sometimes hit people like for real <laughs> over like... How much health does that take? <laughs> if you die in the game, you die in real life. Right. Uh, but yeah, it would, it would really just ruin the whole experience because yeah. these people were like acting like giant children mm -hmm. at a place where like we're already lampooned for that right like, come on ha have some sense of self yeah right? yeah no that's fair All so right. that that level of it really just took a lot mm -hmm. out of the whole thing so yeah so that's probably something you saw within your first couple experiences oh yeah um and then yeah so then when did you like you said i mean you when you with anything you you know you start broad and then you kind of narrow down mm -hmm. what you like about it so when did you start like understanding that you know that maybe this fantasy thing was not your way of doing it way too late way too late. <laughs> uh, I, I did it for like five years i mm. think like all throughout college all throughout high school and um i eventually became part of the staff of that game mm. uh Were which you game master i sort of was there are these things called marshals mm. where you basically write little stories and take people on like little quests mm. And it takes like you know a couple hours, and like that's that's part of the weekend for you. Yeah. Um, and one that is kind of cool, like I'm a dungeon master for Dungeons and Dragons and other games, so I do like that aspect of it. You did get into dungeons. Right, oh yeah. Cool. Oh, oh right. yeah. You found friends. All right. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it, ultimately, it was not worth the amount of effort I would put into it. It definitely wasn't rewarded very much. Okay. But yeah. um, it, it wasn't actually until the pandemic hit where I wasn't able to go for an extended period because it used to be every single month. Mm. And then when I wasn't able to go for a while, I kind of had the opportunity to take a step back and be like, wow, this really dominated a lot of my life. You know, yeah. I, I th thought so much about it all the time. I put so much money into it all the time. Maybe I'm just going to take a break. And uh, eventually when I felt comfortable going back to it, I had realized that maybe the issue was the game I went to and it just wasn't the style that I liked, yeah. you know. And a friend of mine recommended this place called Damarung which is a Viking, like, Nordic-style thing. So that was your first deviation from mm -hmm. the usual fantasy. And it was so much fun. It was so weird and, like, clearly narrative-based, and everyone kind of was, like, more of a mature adult about a lot of things. Uh, one of the saddest things you'll see in the older style was, like, someone will, you know, stab you or whatever, and people, like, won't die. They'll cheat. Yeah. Right? And it's like... Come on, isn't it like a fun little game we're playing? Isn't it kind of interesting if you die? Yeah. Where it raises the stakes. Yeah, yeah. And in this game, people ask to be killed. Like they'll outside of the game in the prep, be like, "Hey, I want to have a, an interesting and dramatic character death. Oh. Can you do this for me?" Yeah. And so people get like burned alive, not really, but You're right. Like, but like to you know go through that as a character, that, and, that and then cool. it becomes something way more you know theatrical and, and interesting, right. and you know there's a clear narrative arc they were going for, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. Yeah, one way that I saw it put, which was interesting, is, like, a lot of the basic, like, fantasy games are, like, play, like you said, like a video game, you play it to win, but there's some that are play to lose, kind of, just yeah. because, like, that's the way that the narrative is supposed to go. For sure. Yeah. It, we, we call it play to lift, okay. which is, like, you know the, the phrase rising tides lift all ships? Uh, I don't, I've heard that, but I don't, I'd never, like, registered it. Sure. It's <laughs> like, what it would mean. <laughs> the idea that if we all commit to making everyone else's story better, suddenly it's not you making your story better. It's, like, a hundred people lifting you up just a little bit. You're going to get much higher. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every story is going to get way more interesting that way. Sure. I, I could definitely see that. So that's when, for you, it, like, all started, like, being, um... I don't know, was it more fun, or was it, like, oh, yeah. more, yeah, it was just more fun? Or? I, it was more fun, and I feel like I got more meaning out of it. Like, I had more emotional experiences. Like, I've cried at this one before. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, I, I never had a similar experience at the other one. Mm -hmm. um, like, you really work on, like, building these deep connections with people yeah. um, and, like, going through tough situations with them because it's kind of intentional that you don't 
succeed. You know, it's trial by fire every time. Right. And I, I don't know. It it just it's more fun. I, there's more of like I don't know when you, if you do more in any kind of art, the more people care about making a meaning out of it, the more there is. Yeah. And it's easier to take that. And, and run with it, you know? Sure. Rather than everyone competing to succeed. Yeah, I feel that. So when did you, like, when did you start acting, actually? Uh, I guess you said, like, 17-ish. But yeah. I'm kind of, yeah. like, wondering where, like, the convergence really, like, you know, took hold for you. Because it sounds like it was this point where you went to this Viking one, and it was really, you know what I mean? Um, I, I had wanted to be an actor, like, every now and again, as, like, a, you know, a teenager. Like, oh, I would I do, do some it. plays, <laughs> yeah. and it was like, oh, this is cool. But it was definitely super bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did, uh, like, stage work. Like, I ran lights and stuff for a little while. I thought that was kind of cool. But I was like, at the time, I was, I was like, oh, man, but wouldn't it be much cooler to be on the stage? Yeah. And uh, our, our school only did musicals, and I uh, don't have a sense of rhythm, so I couldn't do any of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, no, that checks out. So I kind of gave up on it for a while. And then I got really into Dungeons and Dragons, and that has a really you know big performative aspect. You you play a bunch of characters all the time, and I got really into uh, Critical Role. If you've ever heard of it, it's, mm, it's no. like a it's like a a weekly show where these voice actors all play Dungeons and Dragons together. It's like seven or eight of them. Okay, and it's 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 pretty popular. They uh they kind of were the the flagship for a lot of other shows that eventually did this, like Dimension Twenty. Uh, and that sort of thing. And I remember thinking, man, wouldn't it be cool to be a voice actor? Yeah. So I started taking voice acting classes, and um, uh, my my partner Anna, very lovingly, got me a class with that one voice actor I mentioned, Wes Johnson. Right. And he, he taught me, and at the end of it, he pulled me aside and was like, hey, Josh, of the people that I've taught, I think you could actually do this. Oh, wow. I think you should give it a try. Yeah. And I remember being, you know, over the moon. Oh, of, of course. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I was like, okay, well, then I have to do all the actual proper steps, right? Yeah. And I, like, that week signed up for acting classes. Okay. Yeah, so that was what? Around 2019? Oh, uh, no, no. It was, like, 2021. 2021. Okay, so it was still after. Okay, so you had yeah. already gone to the Viking thing at this point. Uh, had I? Oh shit! It's all blending together. It all blends together. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, all right. it know. was roughly around the same time. Roughly around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting. Well, because again, like I think that you probably could pull. I mean, just based on my experience with the acting class and then you know stand up, which is like a different uh, ball game. Pulling the things that I learned in acting class and using it towards something that like I want to have fun with and enjoy. You know, for what sure, I mean? for sure. So it's like I I feel like you probably could do that a lot within um you know larping absolutely yeah. I, I think and one of the things we talk about in our acting class is like what are you doing to the person whenever you're giving any sort yeah. of you know performance it's not like what you're doing to the audience but like what you're trying to get and exploit from the other actor right and i think that translates really really well to larp because if you're just doing stuff for the sake of doing it it becomes hard to understand like why anything's happening at all right yeah. Like, I'm not really learning anything about your character. I'm not learning anything about the situation we're in. But if you were trying to get something out of me, if you're, like, Game of thrones in me right now, <laughs> well, right. suddenly something more interesting is happening, yeah. right? Like, I now know that, oh, I'm kind of under threat right now. Oh, yeah. I know that, but I know that if I make the right deal with you, something really good might happen. Mm. Well, well, suddenly we have this kind of risk-reward situation happening. Yeah. And I know that you want something bigger than what I have. Right. So it, it becomes more of a careful It's like play. a chess game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I, I love the shit out of that. Yeah, definitely. Well, it becomes, like, you said, a more complex... Um, not only narratively, but like like a chess game, you know yeah, what I mean? Like right. checkers. There's more chess. to the play of it. Yeah, definitely. So Nordic, just to you know, clear that up, is more focused on the character aspect of the game. For sure, it. Some people call it emergent, also, okay. if that's a thing people are interested in looking at. Mm -hmm. Where, yeah, it's it's really this big focus on creating like the story is the more important thing. Sure. Right, and, and like. There is no measure of how well you did beyond how fun it was for everyone else. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know? fun. But and and the rules are like pretty loose if there are any. Basically. Yeah, a lot of it just kind of plays off logic, mm -hmm. right? Like there are some set things. Like if I get hit with a spear a couple times, I should fall down. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, right. and like if someone has a big ass hammer and they're a, a really huge person, 
mm-hmm. and they make a big show of swinging real big and they hit me, it should knock me properly down. Like I should make them feel strong. Yeah. Right? Because that's what they wanted to come here and wanted to do. Right. Uh, if someone is playing like a really kind of slimy, greasy person, yeah. you know, obviously in real life, I'd be like, hey, don't talk to me. Yeah. Because that'd be super weird. Yeah. But this is a game. And if you remember that, and if you remember that, like, you're going to have a way more interesting experience if you let them be greasy and weird next to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, suddenly, okay, you're going to find a reason to justify why you're going to keep talking to them. Yeah. And you're probably going to have a more, you know, rewarding, weird experience right. because of it. <laughs> And, you know, you might make something really weirdly emotional. Mm. Um, at, at least in the game that I played for a while, I played a character that was greasy and weird, and I talked like this. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, any reasonable person would say, get out of my life. Right. But I ended up having a lot of, like, really emotional experiences with people because they let me in, and they gave me a chance to do something. When Where you completely manipulated them emotionally and... Uh, yeah, actually, because they, they all thought I was evil, but I was actually the only good guy in, in a particular group. Oh, wow. I, I pretended to be evil to not get killed. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, I eventually was able to do some some stuff with that, and it was right. it was so so fun. So um, so yeah, after you got into the Viking one, then di- from there, did you completely? Is that when you started trying a bunch of different types? Yeah, my my partner Ann and I thought we'd experiment with a couple different things, see if that's. A funny way to put it. <laughs> we yeah. decided to experiment with different types of warping. <laughs> Wink. Um, where, you know, we just wanted to see if, like, it was it just this game or was it this style? And so we caught, tried a couple in that old way, and it just didn't play. Mm. And once you've, like, you know, tasted unicorn blood, you know. Yeah. It's nothing else is as good. Right. Um, but the company that does the Viking LARP also does a bunch of other ones that we've been trying, and consistently they've been pretty good. So, yeah, what, what other types have you gone to? The, the one that we're going to uh, next is uh, it's called Dead Legends. It's, a, it's one where it's like fantasy western. Mm. So it's like in the middle of this expansion into what would become Wyoming. And we f- there, you find this place, which uh, it's, it's a lawless land. It's currently uh, attempted to be occupied by several different governments. And while everyone's doing that, well, so you have, like, a very normal human goal. Also, zombies and shit are real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and in the daytime, I'm, you know, an outlaw. I'm in a gang. I'm trying to rob people or, like, exert a level of control over this town. Yeah. With my a gang of, like, ten people. Right. And then at night, all of that kind of has to get set aside because Dracula's here to beat you up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, wow. Okay. We all band together, fight off Dracula for a little while. Yeah. And then tomorrow we can go back to shooting each other. Oh, wow. But I bet there's a lot of nuances, you know, within that. For because, sure. you know, at night you realize you're fighting with the enemy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, do I, I guess we do have exactly. to put, put it yeah. off, right? Right. My, my character's, like, in-universe best friend is, like, this Union soldier Yeah. Uh, who, like, at the time the, the Civil War is over. Okay. Um, but the union at this time is like beating the shit out of the KKK, which power to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, hard to find fault with you there. Yeah. But at the time, uh, uh, my character is like an outlaw. So in the land that I'm trying to run, he's also trying to establish a level of authority. Mm. But because we're, our lives are literally on the line, like some you know giant monster is going to rip our head off and, and wear our skin. Yeah. Well, now I have to save your life because if I don't, I die. Yeah, and then oh well, suddenly we have a more of a, an interesting experience because now even though I want to fight you tomorrow, or you want to fight me, you might realize like I did save you your saved life your and life, I did not yeah. have to. Wow, you know? Yeah, no, that is crazy. How much like prep? Like, so I mean, what it seemed like I had gathered before is that you know when you get there, you get like a card with your character, and kind of like with D and D, when you start the game, you get like your character and your character's background. But it sounds like. Because this one's not until the end of next month, right? Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like this one, I mean, how early do they have sign-ups, and then how, you know, how much of the, the story and character they, do they establish? So for the most part, places will give you kind of the, the setting, like the background, like what's been going on, the level of weirdness of like magic or monsters or whatever is in. Yeah. And then they'll tell you like what factions are available, where like these are people who are doing stuff right now in the universe. And you'll basically say to them, like, hey, I want to play a person from this group that does this thing. Mm. And uh, they'll go, yay or nay. Uh, some places don't even ask, which I think is maybe some poor form. Because yeah. you'll get some pretty bad stuff. Uh, and how early a... is this ahead of the actual event? Uh, some people do a day of. 
they oh okay. yeah yeah but it, it's not like they assign you a character none of it's like given to you it's it's all what you're willing to go through with okay yeah yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and some people get really into the weeds and like planning, like I'm going to do this scene and this scene and this scene. I need this person and this person and this person. And I don't really do that all that much. Mm-hmm. I really like to kind of have a more spontaneous experience. Right. Every now and again, I'll plan some specific thing in the interest of, I don't know, I want to do something during the day that's more involved and sometimes trick people into doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, for this next game, I'm going to be throwing like a fancy party just you know, because, like, right. nothing necessitates it, but I want my gang, which is a group of very evil people, to yeah. do, to get in good with the public. You know, okay. I want them to, like, like us. So, sure. And yeah. it's, kind of, it's kind of sneaky. We're like, hey, we're offering free booze, and, oh, nice. you know, there's going to be dancing and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there, it's real booze, right? <laughs> yeah. All, almost always, the games are technically dry, and no one abides by that rule. Okay. There was one Christmas game where they said it's a wet game and everyone went way too ham. <laughs> I barely remember that game. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that would make it more real at, it, at points. To an know? extent, for sure. There were some really fun experiences I got out of people who are normally very quiet or reserved. Yeah. That are like it's it's still asking a lot of you to LARP. Like mm-hmm. it asks a lot of your like social battery and emotional battery. Sure. And you know, people who have been drinking a little bit, well, you know, they loosen up a little bit. And I'll, yeah. they'll have experiences with people who normally just wouldn't have spoken to you. Not because they didn't like you or anything. Just because, you know, it's they're hard to, to get out there. Yeah, they're reserved or introverted yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, so the community-wise, like, do you do it with a lot of the same people? I was kind of curious about that. Cause, sure, yeah. You know, when you get into any hobby, you obviously, the, one of the best parts is, like, doing it regularly and getting closer to the people that do it. and For sure. You know, yeah, having that community. A lot of the games kind of have a continuum. Like, it's not like you go there once and do the thing and the story is over. Yeah. So, like, the, the cowboy one, the Viking one, I see the same people almost every time. And, yeah, you get some friends out of it. Um, you'll also see, like, different between different games. There's kind of a circuit of people that do it a lot. There are some people who it is, like, the thing they do. They play, like, every single game yeah. that comes around. Like, PA is pretty good at having good games. Sure. So if you go to any of them, you're probably going to see these people. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's cool, you know, yeah. uh, to make sure that, like, hey, I'm going to have someone I know when I get started here. I'm going to have someone yeah. I can play with and who's going to run it, run with me when I have this weird idea, you know? Mm. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, I feel like with events like this, it would be really good to know because, I mean, you're, you're I mean, you're putting yourself, obviously, you're in a character when you get there but like i you know it's still a bunch of people you don't know and i feel like you have to have some sort of comfortability oh yeah established to be able to really get into it for sure i I definitely recommend if it's something you're wanting to try that you go with a group yeah Uh, i try to bring people every now and again if i think like hey this might be worthwhile as like a large group of people yeah my uh, one of my best friends he came to the game that i met him at completely alone uh, uh, and it was a ballsy move. Yeah. Luckily, he's a really socially affable guy. Okay. He just talks to everybody all the yeah. time. Right. So when I, I met him, uh, he was just like, hey, I'm going to start doing this thing. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, hi, yes. So I guess we're going to play together. Great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we kind of just haven't stopped hanging out since. And that was pretty cool. Oh, cool. So that's like a long-term friend that you've made from, from doing the LARPing. Oh, yeah. I've made quite a few. I actually met Anna at a LARP. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. What, uh, what's the story? What's the, uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> The the first day I met her was not very eventful. We were sleeping in the same cabin, because wow. uh, it's always in cabins. Right. And uh, I just happened to walk in the door, and she was sleeping in the cabin that was eye level. Mm. Uh, so the only thing that I saw of her was her ass. <laughs> and then I went to bed, uh, and that was fine. Sure. And, then, <laughs> and that was fine. <laughs> and then the next day, uh, I, I just you know noticed her, and I thought she was pretty attractive. And I thought, all right, I'm going to say hey. And I, at the time, was playing, like, a swashbuckling, suave, like, basically Spanish fencer dude. Okay. And I... So this is in character. In character, right. yeah, yeah. A lot of flirting happens at these games, and it's always dicey if it's real or not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to, to its credit and detriment. Yeah. Um, and I just, I said something flirty. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember that the very first thing she said to me was very mean. Oh. <laughs> I, I said some flirty line, and she said, why do you think I should care? And I went, huh. <laughs> I, I didn't get repulsed by that. I went, oh, we're going to have some witty banter. Yeah. And then kind of from that point forward, we just kind of kept making fun of each other and, like, going out of our way to, like, have these, like, little witty repartees. Sure. And eventually being like, 
okay, this is clearly not in character. Yeah. We're talking to each other. Right. You know, and it was like, all right, yeah, let's give it a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That line for you, is that like hard to find sometimes? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> when the struggle with a lot of these situations, because people aren't, it's a relatively new kind of thing. I know it has been started since like the seventies, but people kind of haven't figured out a lot of the social emotional language of it yet. Sure. So there's a lot of people, uh, it's definitely myself included when I first started who would take in game flirting as out of game flirting a lot. And I played a pretty flirty, you know, suave character. So I had a lot of situations where people were like, you want to make out? And me being like, Whoa, wait, where did this come from? Yeah. Uh, I, I remember I had one crazy experience where, uh, I was, Talking to this one woman in in universe uh, for like only a little while, yeah. you know. But I was charming and she was funny and it was great. And we hung out for a little while, and then the next time I met her at the game, she vented in about some real life stuff, and I did not want it to be a dick. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, tell me about sure. your problems. I'll, I'll like walk through them with you. And then the next time I saw her, she was uh, in her cabin and she invited me in, and she said, "Hey, I brought nipple clamps," and I went, "Oh." Oh no! <laughs> oh man! I uh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I gotta go. Right? Yeah, that's uh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nipple clamps. That's a, an intro. That's not part of the character. I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think that was meant to be involved. I don't know if that was a big character bit. But I didn't feel like it. <laughs> uh, but that's interesting that you find that it's uh, relatively new. Because I mean, 1970s really isn't that old. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? As far back as other things go you know what i mean for sure um so yeah and then i mean also the fact that it is kind of still a small group um it was probably bigger back in like the 70s 80s um and has gone through waves and fluctuations as yeah, everything for sure. does yeah so i mean where do you see uh, you know as somebody involved in it where do you see because like when i'm reading online it says that there's a lot of potential um especially in like china for some reason it's like the third most involved form of entertainment behind like sports and like movies Damn. is LARP, larping and they're actually trying to get um like chinese government to like you know regulate it a that's pretty bit. cool yeah yeah so like if somebody who's involved in it do you see it becoming a bigger thing or oh yeah, yeah yeah for sure it's you know a lot of the kind of new ideas and and uh rules and stuff have been kind of migrating over from a lot of different places to america for a little while now <clears throat> But uh, when you play these things, inevitably, inevitably, like if you do film, you're going to have film ideas, right? right? So a lot of people will play these games and think, well, I could do something like this. Yeah. And there's a lot of art where you're kind of a dickhead if you see someone do it and go, I could do that. Yeah. I don't think this is one of those things, not because it doesn't require a lot of skill, but because it's usually done with a team. Mm. So when you think I could do this thing, the very next step is usually to ask, hey, how can I do this? Yeah. And people who want to help you, because that's the culture that you're building, right. will help you do it. Yeah. So people see any reason to make more games out of stuff, and it's broadening in genre. I know that uh, right now there's a game that's going to happen, I think real soon, but I'm not going to go to it, called Concrete Olymp- or Conquered Olympus, yeah. where everyone is like Greek heroes and gods, but modern day. Yeah. Uh, and like you're given, you're instructed to like, build prosthetics that suit your god or monster oh, shit. which sounds awesome yeah a little more costly than i'm willing to put into it right but for the people that like this is the thing they do and they want to put a lot into it sounds amazing yeah you know? definitely so it's and that's the thing is like i didn't even you know everybody's basic idea of it is like you know the fan lightning bolt yeah lightning bolt. Yeah. <laughs> right exactly or like role models you seen that yeah <laughs> yeah uh, honestly i i respected role models like in eventual take like no this is cool i'm gonna let this make me happy yeah. like i love that it was kind of freeing for them yeah well and and that's what i think is um maybe the general arc of larping is like shown through role models of the movie because there are like people who are like normal social and i don't know not normal but like consider you know consider larping to be kind of like a geeky thing or sure yeah and then once you get into it, you realize, like, oh, okay, these are real people. Like, they're fun. They're having a good time. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, they learn lessons about, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have prejudged this. I'm having a really good time. Yeah, you know for what sure. I mean? And it, you know, helps people cope with their own geekiness in, in a way, I think. Yeah, it, it gives you the option to kind of free some stuff up and let go of certain social restrictions you've held on yourself for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But so it's cool, though, that, you know, again, even in that movie, the, the general concept of LARPing, right? at least from my 
point of view is just like the fantasy token uh, yeah, universe, yeah. like D and D type stuff. But once you told me that you were really into like Wild West LARPing, I was like, yo, that's actually kind of sick. It, it's it's such a funny thing, uh, especially the Wild West one. Yeah. Um, because you do have to. There are still a little bit of rules, mm-hmm. and um, it it does make it inherently a little silly. Yeah. For example. Uh, one of my favorite things about the game, and I really thought I was going to hate this, and I really don't, where when you shoot somebody, and we use fucking Nerf guns right. that we've painted to look like regular guns. Yeah. In the real world, if you shoot a gun, everyone within like a 500-foot radius is going to know, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to be able to hear it because it's yeah. fucking loud. So to simulate that, when we shoot the guns, we have to yell as loud as we can, <laughs> bang. <laughs> so if I shoot my gun, whether or not I hit you, I have to yell, bang. Yeah. <laughs> or if I throw a stick of dynamite, which we have, like we throw like these things, and if they hit or get near you, you have to shout, kaboom. <laughs> and it's so fucking funny, because you'll be like in the dead of night, waiting for fucking Dracula to come around the corner, <laughs> and you hear, bang, 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 and your thought isn't, wow, this is so stupid, it's, oh, shit, I'm in a lot of danger. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really like, I mean, those are scary in the middle of the night. You yeah. hear somebody, bang, you're dead. <laughs> Thankfully, though, if it's like a melee weapon, like I have a, a fake machete that yeah. I use, you don't have to you do have that. To... <laughs> you know, I don't go, <laughs> no, no, I just have to actually hit you. Okay. <laughs> which is very fun. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, I think that would be, like you said, I think that's one of the main draws that people enjoy is, like, the fighting aspect of it. Sure. Especially if you're not buffering the whole time. Yeah, dude, and I don't know, there's there's something that makes you feel so fucking cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know, uh, I love modern fashion, you know? Yeah. The ways people dress look totally fine. Sure. But if you're, like, wearing a full suit of armor or, like, a cowboy getup where yeah. you're, like, these are like the the cool guys of their time. You kind of feel it. You yeah, know? dude. I mean, even just cowboy hats. Right. You know? Have you ever just worn a cowboy hat? In, uh, in I love life? my hair too much for cowboy hats. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Uh, I'm covering a bald spot. <laughs> just one bald spot. But you, you, I cannot get over the look of tall boots, long coat. Yeah. Like it just it it makes you look. It really increases your silhouette. Makes yeah. it, you look like I don't know. You're like a person of action. Yeah. And really, you know, do some stuff. Well, yeah, and you feel it too. One thing that I heard recently is like. Everybody looks good in a cowboy hat, which I didn't want to, like, think about or, like, put in my mind. Mm-hmm. But since, like, wearing one and, like, trying to see what it would look like on other people, it's like, damn, everybody would look good in a cowboy yeah. hat. My, um, in my friend group, the person who plays our, like, cowboy gang leader, yeah, um, she wears, like, the full getup of, like, cowboy hat. She wears, like, leather, what are they called, chaps yeah, and everything. And for most of my life, I thought those things looked goofy as shit. Yeah. But then I, you see a person running around at me and, like, shooting two pistols. And I'm like, ah, that looks fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I misjudged you. <laughs> Seriously, I recommend everybody try at least just wearing a cowboy hat and maybe boots at some point. In their life. I went, I, uh, I was, like, a space cowboy for um, Halloween last year. Nice. And I couldn't find a cowboy hat in Philadelphia. Like, I went to Party City and had, like, a really fake, sure. cheap one that I got. But, like, the real ones were, like, 200 bucks or some crazy stuff. Like yeah. That. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, those things are crazy expensive. Yeah. But I went back to my hometown in Ohio, and it's the first gas station in Ohio that I dropped in. I had, like, $30 cowboy hats. I'm like, I'm going to buy one of these cowboy nice. hats. And then I went and got Starbucks afterwards. It was like, you know, I usually get, like, you know, cream or sugar. Or, you know, even, like, I'm a Frappuccino guy. I'm not afraid to admit sure, it. Sure, yeah. I love Fraps. But I was wearing the hat, and I was like black coffee nice please. yeah oh that's the yeah. thing oh, one thing I, I love to death is people get really really into the the aesthetic of it such that they'll place really odd restrictions on themselves yeah which is so fucking funny to me um like people will only eat certain foods like my one oh. friend plays a vegetarian for no real reason uh but <laughs> uh they're, they're like that's not fair they're playing like um what's the word a tito taylor when like you don't drink smoke you don't eat meat you don't do the all of these things okay. which is a which was a group of people at the time who had like these specific ideas about health sure and so at the larp he doesn't eat meat which is weird because i do all of the cooking at the game yeah so i make a ton of meat because i love meat yeah. and he's like i guess i'm just not gonna eat these <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird yeah so i mean with the meals and everything like that you guys have to bring and like actually prepare do you try to prepare things that would have been made during that mm-hmm. time period yeah i have a whole old timey ass cooking set of like cast iron shit yeah uh oh, out, you, cast iron you build a campfire you don't look for one some places do offer meals mm-hmm. the ones we go to don't and i kind of prefer it that way because mm. they're usually like i don't know 
you remember going to like camp when you were a kid or, or you know cafeteria lunch they're usually like that kind of quality sure and it's just not my bag i can cook and i'm happy to cook i like to cook yeah so i usually just cook for our group of like 10 or so people okay uh and it's just like honestly a really great aesthetic experience yeah because it's like you know 7 a.m we're in the mountains. There's like fog rolling in, yeah. and you're sitting there around a campfire with your friends eating fucking beans. Yeah, and it's like I don't know That's something immersive. about this. Yeah, right. It feels right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I want to eat beans around a campfire. That sounds <laughs> sick, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that's um probably a, a good place to you know kind of wrap it. I don't oh, know sure. if I missed anything um that you wanted to bring up about it. I did want to also talk about. I feel like escape rooms are just like a modern way for people to like do larping it's, without it's a little bit that in that, LARPing. That, that realm for sure. Yeah. I definitely whenever I did them, I treated them like that. I responded oh, yeah. to all of the prompts like they were so real. Yeah. It's like why not? Right? Yeah, it's you're more there, fun, right? You know, you yeah, paid like the money said. for it. Make it weird. Make it fun. Yeah, commit to the bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel that. Um, yeah, that and uh, I don't know. I think a lot of people like reenactments like you know what i mean like civil war reenactments and stuff i just don't think i think again larping has maybe a a, a, is a a connotation yeah that is um potentially not great for it i feel like even for sure larp the word is kind of a silly word oh yeah it's not (laughs) awesome um the the community in its kind of inception didn't do a lot to help itself right in that regard uh and you know not without its faults, there are a fair number of kind of socially awkward people in that group that can kind of do some damage to it. Mm. But in, in recent years, the games have gotten pretty good, at least in my personal experience, I don't know about elsewhere, uh, at filtering those, like, not socially awkward people, but, like, socially... Inept? Yeah, people who are, like, hurting other people's feelings or things like that. Yeah. Or, like, making them really uncomfortable in certain ways. Really good at filtering those kinds of people out. Yeah. Because um, it, it's just... Aside from being decent people, it's just, like, good business, sure. right? Like, well, I don't want to go to a game where someone's going to, like, I don't know, harass me all the time. Yeah. Well, definitely. So, I mean, do they have, like, a um, filtering process? or like? Yeah, yeah. Most places have, like, specific rules teams and things dedicated to that job of, like, mm-hmm. filtering in, like, hey, if a player reports this thing, someone's going to go investigate it and take care of it. Okay. Um, some places you can only get in by invitation. Oh. where yeah like it's it's really really high quality they put so much money into it but you're only allowed in if you've been to other games that people know you from and they okay. sponsor you to get in oh wow yeah yeah no that that is a good way to. and again i think like you said that makes it more like people that are more um committed that are actually able to like really uh, immerse themselves into it. where somebody's mm-hmm. like oh this is something i'm gonna do on the weekend for fun yeah it's like a dick about it, it it can really ruin that experience i remember when the, f- the first game i used to play people like one were really lazy about a lot of stuff but also didn't respect the universe mm. so you would be like here's a bunch of knights and and wizards and whatever doing these things and here's a little anime boy running <laughs> around in his like cosplay wig and Saying like Stardust, whatever, you yeah, know. And then you kinda gotta like play <laughs> along with it. Yeah. But... I, I would, you know, kind of be like, hey, yeah, it's whatever, and then go do something over there. Like, yeah. It's it was just so permissive to a fault where it would kind of spoil the, the experience. Right. Yeah. Well that's good. Yeah, that's definitely good. I didn't again, I didn't even realize it was a filtering process. So like that has to help so much uh, for sure. with it. And I think it will continue to help, obviously. Like, you know, um the exclusive uh, exclusivity of it kind of makes it more fun, and then you know people like you um, that are socially apt. Is that a? That's not a thing. <laughs> Adept is <laughs> Adept. <what we're> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll start to you know I I you know that you are inviting Caitlin to the next one. You know what I mean? Start yeah, like yeah. trying to involve uh, more people that you know because I think most people would enjoy this. Who wouldn't enjoy like like I said like going? It's like camping, but with like a, a actual things to yeah, do. Yeah, like activities that are kind of already in play. For sure. I, yeah. I definitely recommend everyone at least try it. Sure. Right? Because, like, w- the worst that can happen is that you have a bad weekend. Yeah. You know, or I, I guess your car could get, like, stuck on a mountain. But, you know. Yeah, but that's not, like, I don't even think it would be bad. It's just, like, the worst is you, you don't like it. So it's, like, camping. You can still enjoy aspects of camping. Yeah. You know, sure. like, you, you, I don't know. I think, I, I heard this once that uh, my sister said it. She's like, you will enjoy something new more than you would something that you are neutral about every time because something new is even if you don't if you actively don't like it it's still new and like you know you'll be grateful that you did it yeah for sure exactly Um, 
So yeah, I don't know. Should I come to your house? What are you doing? <laughs> it's your fucking birthday. Yeah, true, true. Not that one, but uh, well, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Do it. I'll definitely keep it on because it does sound super cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure it does. Uh, but dude, yeah, thanks for coming out and talking about it with me. Uh, Good to be here. Yeah, it was a really good conversation. So I'll give you a little mic bump, and then we'll wrap her up.